you all. <laughs> yep, and you've certainly had your share of moves in the in their lives. And so, what's his new job? Well, I didn't ask his title, but it's just a, a step up. Like he's a supervisor of recreation. Um, now he's moving to a specific, well, it was for the city of Greeley. So now he's going to be in the city of North Glen and it's a brand new facility, brand new job. Um, and it's, it's great. I mean, it's, he's so, he is excited. I mean, it's a good jump in pay. Is he like and, the vice director, deputy director? I don't remember him telling me the title. Yeah. So we'll have uh, find out together. He can post to <laughs> post to LinkedIn. They they gonna pay I'm for sorry. his move, Brenda. What? They gonna pay for his move. No. Probably but not. He, it's it's too close. I mean he could commute, so mm -hmm. but it's fifty it's fifty it's more than fifty miles, isn't it? Yes. Okay, they, you know, you know, it's not too close. Okay. Um, well, he's accepted the job. Uh, I'm not is, sure who he is the mark, for, unless it's changed this year. So I don't know, Tom, if he can ask for that now that he's already been, ex you know, given a letter um, to, you know, to accept. I mean, yeah. you're a recruiter. He, does, he doesn't. He doesn't have a letter yet because they had to do the fiscal yesterday. Um, but they have a verbal agreement, so. But the other thing that he can do, because I know this from our moving around, is that he can um, take off on his taxes the cost of that move. No, he can't. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they, they eliminated that year last year. Oh, that's, okay. Don't yeah, I. that's what. Because, because I couldn't do it. <laughs> Oh, wow. See, I'm not up to date on my laws. Well, you know, the, I don't know. His, I don't know at what level cities do pay. They do, but not at all levels. So uh, well, I, sure, and may, I, and I can't say I can't say whether he's getting it or not. I didn't ask that. Um, and, you know, maybe it was a negotiable item because, um, you know, they know where he lives. Right. Well, you were, you were, your situations, you guys didn't get reimbursed, right? When you're working for the Red Cross? Well, they, the military paid for our move. Okay. The military paid for it, Red Cross didn't. Correct. Okay. I thought you guys had to eat those. No, the, military, the military paid for each move. So they just loaded it in a big C-130 and... <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> you ho hoping a witch of how long it's going to take. I remember we it took our household goods, I don't know, six months to be pulled out of New Jersey. <laughs> really? Yeah, it was a long time. So a lot of inflatable furniture for six months. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. It was, in fact. And I think it was Stanley was living with us, too, on his inflatable piece of the furniture. <laughs> right. <laughs> wow. Well, our, our Ryan and Khaki crew. Uh, they're good. Uh, they all, they're, you know, busy. There's the kids are still in school or just about to finish. Man, that's late. Next week, next week. Yeah. Hey, well, they start later than other the schools here in Colorado. Really? I think. I thought the further south you went, the early. Wait a minute. They are starting, what, in August? Because I don't know. So when they come to when they go to Florida, <clears throat> I guess a couple weeks. Betsy, is, did they say how long they're going to be there? Um, I think they're going to be there for a, at least a week. Yeah, at least. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Ryan had wanted to be there longer, but things may have changed. But yeah. um, anyway, so sometime in August. Mm -hmm. I, I knew that they. Wanted to come before school started, but after the baby was born. Yeah. Has she? So I guess she, June hasn't had her baby yet, right? Not that I know of. I mean, it sounds like she's 
being good and getting the bed rest. Good. June is uh, Kaki's sister. Um, yeah. And June, her, you know, little June, Kaki and Ryan's daughter is named after June, her sister. I was going to say, June certainly grew up in a hurry here. Ah, we have a baby's <laughs> right. Huh? Well, you know, was it, was it Emmy's mother? Is that what I'm getting? Am I getting yeah. this chronology right? That had her first baby after, what, 10? <laughs> At 11. She was 11. Oh, my goodness. The first that's, one. That's that just so still baffles me. Even. I know, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't, I can't even imagine, I mean, you know, a college, you know, my kids through college having children. Right. I mean, because they just were not ready. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Having a baby at 11 is like having a baby doll. Right. So, what did you want to say, Mom? Uh, Brenda, uh, tell Justin I got pictures on my Instagram of him and the children for the first time, and I appreciate it. You got pictures on what? She went on Instagram and looked at the pictures that he had posted, so she finally oh. figured out how to look at them. Yeah. Oh. They oh. were really good. All right, so back to the back to the June that is that is Kaki's sister. Is this her first baby? Yes. Now how old is she? June uh, 30, thirty something, maybe. Is she younger or older? She's younger. She's okay, younger. Okay, that's what I thought. So Kaki's the oldest. I'm sorry? I, I don't know her age. Sorry, Tom. Yeah. I just know she's younger. Than Kaki. It might be a, a couple of years because I think That's Jonathan I think. Jonathan is like a few years younger, right? John is the same age as Kristen. So Yeah. So they're probably it sounds like they're oh, all in the same range as your family. Yeah, I think so. I think maybe June. Yeah, see. So Brian and Justin are two years apart, and then Justin and Kristen are three years apart. Uh -huh. Yeah, their 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 range is right about like ours yeah and, and john is khaki's brother i take it yes yeah. got it first i've heard these names so oh, sure. sorry <laughs> sorry yeah. Tom. that's all right the family. The, uh, so how's Lori this week um i haven't talked to her except little snippets she's doing fine we have this this week is invoice week so She's always busy sending out invoices and um, negotiating with our, it's also a contract turnover year. So we're ne she's negotiating the contract terms and making sure that our subcontractors, our 1099s are still willing to go forward with us. <laughs> so uh, I thought she was there with you. No, no, just mom, mom and I came. She told us to get out of her hair. <laughs> so did you go to church, mom? Did y'all go down to Roanoke yet? Well, we didn't go to Roanoke. Uh, Brenda, I didn't want to go to Roanoke because I was scared of the epidemic. And I, it's like I told Bobby, I won't come to Roanoke until I can hug everybody. Oh. But he's got trips up. He said, you know, he hugs everybody and all. So I don't know. Well, we, we came here to sell the car first. Yeah. Um, and I had to do some check-in with clients, uh, one, because it's a contract renewal period and there's a couple of loose ends that I'm trying to tie up. Um, but with the car sold in the first weekend, so that was last weekend when the car sold. That's good. Yeah. So now Mama and I have been Ubering and taxiing and busing everywhere. Busing. So how, long, how long are you staying? No, uh, we'll be leaving to go home on Wednesday. Oh, okay. We've been here. We'll be here. Have been here 21 days. Seems like you just got there. I know, right? Mm -hmm. It was fast. Yeah. Yes, we got on a bus. Um, we've gotten on the bus twice. Mm -hmm. I have to. I have to do it when it's easy for her to get to. I took her to a favorite. She likes the car. The um, Sherlington area close by, and. It's easy to get on the bus to get over there and get on the bus to get back. So that's what we did. Oh, and that's, then, that's that area that's named after? 
Yeah. Same name as your mom, Shirley. Shirley. <laughs> there is actually a, a street here named Shirley. Yeah, Shirley Street, yeah. So we uh, actually, the guy that bought her car lives off of Shirley Street. That's how that how she saw that. The guy that bought your car? No, I'm sorry. That's who we bought the walker from. Yes. That's right. I'm sorry. The guy who bought the, that we bought the walker from, because we bought a used walker so she'd have something to get around with. She is truly unstable. No falling, right? That's what I say. No falling, no falling. We can get her a, you know, we can get her a lawn chair and a uh, hover hoverboard. I told you that. I like the bubble wrap idea better. <laughs> I like the bubble wrap. Yeah. yeah. But she has to stand up to use the bubble wrap. I mean, you can put oh. bubble wrap around it. A, a, well, we can put bubble wrap on her arms and her legs. <laughs> yeah, my elbow. Oh, yeah. I, saw, oh, last night. I saw a really cute video uh, yesterday, and it was this. Uh, a grandmother and grandfather who um, were trying to be hip and it was pouring, it was raining outside. So they went outside, took a um, ironing board, put it through the puddle that flows down the street and they both got on the ironing board and acted like they were surfing. Oh no. And it, was, it was so, so funny. And they did it to the beach boys. Um, surfs up or a song anyway that's awesome and, and it was so cute that they were trying to be hip it was funny <laughs> was it on tiktok or youtube or um i don't know for sure because someone else i was watching a a, a, a facebook live for sewing and she does these things to make you smile and she posted it hmm. wow. it was really it was really really cute <laughs> I haven't tried that in a in a video meeting. That's a good idea. That is a good idea. You know, she <laughs> always has at the beginning of her segments, you know, something fun, something to make you smile. Sure. Well, I and, do that. I do that too. I do that, but you know, I've never thought of using a video. Oh. That's a good idea. I, of course, I have to figure out how to do that. I use videos in my training sessions. You know, different things that one, it's either humorous or it's just to drive home the point. Like I've used lots of movies like Jumanji and. Um, yeah, but in this setting so here? Not, not in sewing, no. <laughs> no, in this setting, in a Teams meeting. Right. In a team, yeah, sure, sure. I've put up a video. Okay, okay so how do you do that? From my computer, I just present. Present and then you have your you have a video keyed up. Yeah. Okay. On my on my desktop. Yeah. Okay. She, she has them ready all the time, so she always is doing it. So. All right. Well, thanks for sharing that. I'll have to try that. I've got a meeting Tuesday night. Uh, maybe I can find something cute to include. Mm. Yeah. I've certainly sent enough around the last couple of weeks. You know. <laughs> but anyway so the uh so what are you guys doing today i'm, well, I'm babysitting yeah from, from 11 30 to 5 30. oh wow that's a good day there's some nap time in the back building I, think, I think they're gonna see five homes now is that is that is that is that time of the day is that surge pricing <laughs> She's free. But, uh, I, I, was, <laughs> I was remembering what you said last week about getting in the Ubers. You discovered the surge pricing. Right. Oh yes, right, right, right. Yeah. You have to go. You have to get. Have to do your Florida meals scheduling. I guess blue hair meals, right? I mean, Florida. <laughs> Florida dinner starts at like three o'clock. Well, we call it Leonard. Yes, it's three to between three and four. You get there between three and four. Why do you call it Leonard? All the other seniors call it dinner. Because um, we eat a late breakfast, like 10 ish, 10 30. Yeah. And we eat Leonard, which is considered our lunch dinner, and then we don't have to eat anything the rest of the day. <laughs> okay. All right. It was Lori's term that she made up Leonard, lunch dinner. Let's have Leonard. Okay. We, when we start scheduling meals, we talk about, okay, we're going to have brunch and dinner. 
Yeah, I, I pretty much gotten down to two meals a day. Mm -hmm. I just don't want anything else, you know. Right. I eat yeah. sick. Uh, I eat pretty well the first two. But, mm -hmm. uh, so you, you guys are just going to hang around today, you said? Um, we are going to take her to get her hair uh, washed and rolled at 1230. And that's in the Bradley Plaza where the Safeway is just, you know, on the bus line. So we'll take the bus over there, get off, and she'll get her hair done. And then we're going to get back on the bus, the dash, and we're going to go to Old Town. And I'm going to just show her around around the torpedo factory we're down by the river. And, you know, we'll have um, a late lunch, Leonard probably, and then we'll come back. Good. So I hear Tom, that. how's Thea? Yes, tell us. You're muted. Huh, you're still muted. Yeah, you still are. My speakerphone. There you, are. There you go. <laughs> My speakerphone keeps going out. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. I, don't, I don't know what's going on there. Uh, it's much better when it's working. <laughs> <laughs> so. So how is Thea? Thea is fine. Um, she's sleeping late. I don't think she, you know, she, uh, um, she has some sort of uh, dura, dura, what do you call it? Eczema? No, it's a, uh, what do you, uh, uh, sub, subdermal? Subcutaneous. Well, I didn't know this was going to go over my head that quick. But <laughs> some sort of. Uh, this is the dermis and subcutaneous would be if it goes under this, if it's under the skin. Things under the skin, yes. Yes. So. She uh, she uh, didn't sleep too well last night. She was sleep. She was still sleeping when I came in here to make this call. But we're supposed to go to um, uh, Victoria Brand, Victoria State Park, over near uh, Elberton, just to check it out. Oh, that'll be Brooke, nice. Brooke, Brooke and her friends have been over there, and then Dave, uh, one of my my computer guy, one of my good friends I've known for many years, was telling me yesterday what a nice place it is. So we thought we'd go try it out. And it's, oh, it's Victoria. I think it's Victoria Bryant State Park. Hmm. You guys always go to some really cool places locally. That's nice. Well, thank you. I mean, usually it means just getting in the car and deciding to go somewhere. Yeah, but you have to know that there's some place to go. There's plenty of places to go. There's always something to do, you know, even in your backyard, if you just do a little research. So. Well, I, yes, I agree with that. I mean, one of our big uh, plans is to, if we're home and retired in the villages, just to start taking picnics in the villages and go to a new location in the villages just to discover it because it's so vast. Well, so you know, hands. we keep a, uh, uh, a table and two camping chairs, a camping table and two camping chairs in the back of the Mazda. Mm -hmm. And um, we started it because of the pandemic, but, uh, you know, so you could go to a restaurant, order your food, and just go set up anywhere, be outside. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. awesome. It, it worked did, great. Uh, we it did that initially uh, um, in the villages, too, when we weren't going anywhere. We take, there, you know, we have picnic tables all throughout the villages, just in different little hammock areas. Right. And so we started going and doing that. We went to the wetlands uh, down by Brownville and... Brownwood, and then we um, there's like these low level these big beautiful trees with you know by the memorials, and then some that are just out there by themselves. So yeah, that's it's been nice. I like everything in the villages is gorgeous. I mean, you know, anywhere you go, it's gorgeous. Well, that's true. It is. It is truly gorgeous, especially if you don't have to get in a car to get to it. Yeah. <laughs> well, they uh, but anyway, that's that's what we plan to do today. So. I don't tomorrow I need yes, I need to mow the grass and I have we're doing a I'm doing a golf tournament so I have some work to do on that. Well that sounds like fun. Are you playing or just working the golf tournament? Uh, we're putting it on. Hometown Heroes golf tournament. Oh, very nice. We half our golf we do a full we took we buy out the entire club, half the golfers play free. They are first responders, firemen and policemen and such. Uh, the other half are the people that pay for it. Um, 
along. And of course, we have to get a number of sponsors along the way. And all the all the proceeds go for uh, visually impaired charities. That's great. I need, I need to find a better way to say that because that's not exactly accurate when you say it that way. Visually impaired charities, charities that benefit the visually impaired is probably a much better. Oh way yeah. No. Charities themselves aren't visually impaired. It's like our inappropriate mention. We have people who are visually impaired that run the stores because the Pentagon opens up its doors for uh, retail for people with disabilities. And we everybody always called it the blind man store, <laughs> which is well, not. Well, a, we had them in Roanoke. Oh, correct. We had them in Roanoke. Um, right, we did. We did have a guy that um, had it was in one of the courthouses. Huh? Wasn't it in the courthouse? I, I don't remember the courthouse, but there were a number of places in Roanoke that had, uh, and I forget what they were called. It wasn't called the blind man store. Um, right. <laughs> but uh, mom, do you remember those? No. Uh -uh. But basically they ran the newsstands. That's right. I was going to say, maybe it's just the newsstand is what they called it. And they just happened to be people who got that position because it was a um, accommodation. I don't know. Right. But they have them in the Pentagon, so um, I'm trying to think of what they're called, what we call them. It's something. It's um, it is something for the visually impaired, actually, because they use acronyms. You know how they use acronyms. But that sounds good, Tommy. Are you doing that through the or through a Rotary or another organization? Lions Club. Lions Club. Okay. That's what nice. the Lions Club is. Right. Yeah. Primarily right. benefit visually impaired. Yes. Or. Uh, causes that's not always right. you know it depends on the local lions club but but by and large that's what the lions club is for and so i've got a real prominence which you know there's there's one in downtown Roanoke. yeah uh, uh that basic there i guess they have a nice building there and you know for years it's been they collected glasses mm -hmm. and rec recycled them to people that needed them but there's so much more i mean they'll, they'll even pay for people's surgery by uh, surgery if you need it Wow. Uh, that sounds great. What an exciting yeah. event. Right, it is. You should join the Lions Club. <laughs> when I retire, <laughs> I have a hard time committing to my own family life. So. <laughs> I understand. Oh, well, whenever you're ready. I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. So how's Brooke? Brooke is wonderful. She, um, I'm not sure that her job is exact. You know, it, it changed a little bit from when she was hired to when she actually started. Mm -hmm. So a little disappointed in that. And it'd been a little bit of a, um, you know, she was hired based on a, on a you know, a, 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 an income. And then the lady reduced her hours by four uh, from 40 hours to 36 hours, which, you know, that's pretty mm -hmm. significant. So, you know, she's disappointed about that but not not mad enough to up and quit but she does have another somebody called her the other day for an interview so she's going to go ahead and do the interview with alta that's who called her oh nice but she uh she was here yesterday we only saw her for like 10 minutes she came and picked up dax he'd been here for a couple of weeks so now we were, we were walking around last night where's the dog i know right <laughs> Where's the grand dog? <laughs> and he was never loud or anything, you know. Just somebody around to pet. Now, is she dating? Sorry. Does she have a boyfriend? She does. And Alex Colella. Okay, yeah. so it's the guy in the pictures. I just yeah. want to, yeah. In fact, um, uh, they went to school together. Oh, really? Uh, I don't remember. It should have been, uh, could have been, could have been elementary school through, but I'm not sure that's right. But he lives in our same, our same school districts, so it should have been. Um, but uh, he works for, um, yeah, some sort of, some sort of automobile accessory type company, if I recall right. He's he's like their. They're 3D printer expert. Oh, nice. Wow. You know, I, you know I, I just totally missed out when 3D printers came along on the opportunity for that. 
Um, but I, the other day I had, I was organizing my garage and the charger for one of my cordless tools is not, not set up to be put on the wall. And I went online and some, there's somebody that makes an adapter plate to put this on. And it's not Black & Decker. It's, um, it's a third party guy that just does 3D printing. And it was excellent. I mean, it was perfect. Awesome. Wow. Was that through Etsy or just through um, something that you, else that you found? Uh, you know, I think it actually came off of Amazon. It wasn't, you know, oh, okay. the third party That's Amazon deal. Because I know that um, Lori has, of course, we're Amazon Prime members, but Lori has also gone to Etsy on a few occasions for them to make special things. You know, she finds people there that you give them the design of what you want, and voila, it shows up in your mailbox. Well, yeah, you know, the, the, um, this thing with 3D printing, I mean, I envisioned it, you know, if you lost a button on your radio, a car radio, you know, you could print one out, you, you, that sort of stuff. I just totally missed how how big that 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 opportunity pool is. Hell, Tesla's even uh, had hired three D printing experts. You don't remember that Mom told us uh, probably a couple of months ago that um, she saw the three D houses being built. Mm -hmm. That one of the colleges is building three D houses. They're printing the the columns and then they're just putting them together. You know. Yeah, I that remember was, the conversation. Yeah, she says she was totally amazed by that. So, well, you know, if, if we can, we need to get it to the price where it's a disruption, so that it takes the price of lumber, right? Uh, or maybe includes lumber, it, it, just in a different fashion. Um, but uh, it is pretty exciting to watch. But it, you know, just like the cars, the economics have to be there uh, for it to, for it to be, be a big deal. Well, but certainly. Know. Certainly, there ought to be plenty of room to reduce the price of housing. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I was just thinking. You, you know, you mentioned lumber, and there's a lot of byproduct from lumber that could actually be built into composite, like they do the composite plywood. Yes. You, know, you can probably even find more in different ways to use it and weave that into the whole production of printing. Sure. Well, that's what we were thinking. We were, we don't we haven't seen anybody mix mediums yet. Uh -huh. uh, other than in a standard, you know, okay, somebody builds the concrete walls, then everybody else has to come in and fill in for the finished touches. Right. Um, but yeah, that would be pretty exciting, wouldn't it? Particularly, you know, the, you know paper and and most of plywood nowadays is a is a a liquid process. Mm -hmm. So it's certainly conceivable that you could set up a printer that just prints like two by fours, or mm -hmm. for lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. for your columns and, and walls so it'd be interesting to see it will be you know it'd be really nice if we were totally uh, we able we were able to how do i say this make things out of substances where we can use every piece of the substance like the, the if you're going to use the tree it'd be nice if we didn't use trees but if you're going to use the tree use all parts of the tree until it's up or it's like okay. a new tree. well Okay, where did you get the idea we don't use all parts of the tree? Yeah. Huh? Where did you get the idea we don't use all parts well, of the tree? Well, that's good, because so, I'm thinking there's other products that came to mind that I'm thinking, I just used that as an example. I didn't know we used all the products of the tree, but we can, yes, because it's paper and it's wood and so on. Well, um, no, no, nuclear no, no, power is one of those things that, you know, it would be nice if we could get scientists to work on the rest to decide what to do with the nuclear power waste. Instead of sit, sitting in a mountain in France, they have scientists working on what is it going to be? What kinds of things can we use? Um, well, they're working on that here. Uh, um, and that's a world, that's a global thing. And, and they, they are using nuclear waste for different things nowadays, you know, for, for heating things. I think there's one in one of the, uh, I forget where it was, maybe it was a satellite I read about. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you, we're you, learning. We're learning. Yeah, but as far as the trees go, Beth, there, there is every every ounce of a tree is used, and trees are the one truly renewable resource that we have. Yeah. A tree comes to comes to crop in mm. just a little over twenty years. Um, so I'm thinking just globe, just in a bigger picture, different things that we have in our houses. How do you recycle everything so that we're never ever having trash? Because it's amazing to me, Mom and I. I've been noticing for months. 
how much trash I generate in this three weeks we've been here, how much trash we generate. <laughs> and um, stop eating. <sighs> or eat, yeah, eat only the fresh things, but even they come in packaging. So um, the good news is that, and I've got to go and find out how well they're doing because I haven't asked the question yet, but the villages quit collecting recycle because they quit recycling. But the reason they quit recycling is because they are now taking our trash and incinerating it and creating energy, turning that energy back to supply sure. the villages. Well, and in fact, if you go do the research, I think you'll find that most recycling program in municipalities uh it's a tremendous waste that it's not being mm -hmm. used like you want it to be used it's not being sold and, and recycled like you like incineration is is probably a really great idea uh, well actually in, in the 19 uh, 70s 1978 79 my boss, who was Chris Pedersen, he was uh, an engineer at DuPont and branched off on his own, and I worked for him, and he wove um, monofilament into a pattern that they were able to put into smokestacks and eliminate practically everything, all the poisonous gases out of air from global companies that have to emit gases to the air. Uh, but his brother was also an engineer and, and designed and operated on a low, lower scale to prove that it exists, that you could incinerate garbage and generate electricity. Right. And before I even quit working for Chris, his the, the uh, oil companies bought his patent because they did not want him to be successful. Well, I don't know. Now I hear that they're doing it, so I'm pleased. So, so I don't know about his, but you know, that, um, all of the, I don't know if you remember, but all of the pulp mills, the people that process the wood mm -hmm. into, into a slurry before it goes into being made into paper or uh, whatever, um, that smelled like rotten eggs. It's a highly sulfur smell. Right. That's all, that's all, yep. Thanks to Peterson or whoever, that's all but disappeared in the last 30 years. Mm -hmm. At least places like uh, Fernandina Beach, which nobody would ever want to go to, is now highly desirable. Mm -hmm. Becoming no age. But the interesting part is it's like 20 or 30 years behind because everybody else has gone the massive thing and Fernandina is just now starting to catch up. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. But to that point, yeah, did, uh, um, yeah that's called scrubbing um, when they do that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's he, you know, the oil company didn't stop it by buying his patent. Uh, other people jumped on board about that time. Yeah. So hopefully, hopefully they bought it and it was an application they're selling. Well, let's hope. I don't, I don't remember. I just know that we were excited about uh, him giving it, that, giving that a go. And then the oil company stepped in. ExxonMobil bought his patent and said, well, you know what, what let us see what we can do with it. Okay, well, in, in fairness, I think ExxonMobil was one of the ones that has got into other products. Mm -hmm. they're, they, they're interesting enough, they're getting a lot of heat right now because they haven't moved moved as fast as the other oil companies. Mm -hmm. And consequently, there's a, the, they lost three seats on their board to environmental activists. Oh, that must have hurt. They made the news, so mm -hmm. it's a big deal. Yeah. But uh, anyway. well, I, guess, I guess we're moving in the right direction. That's good. We can stop putting trash in the ocean and floating up on other people's beaches. That would be great. Okay. Um, I don't know who puts trash in the ocean. We don't. I don't know if it's America or if it's other countries. You know, uh, other countries are not as neat and tidy as we seem to be. Yeah. But there are there are places. I, you need I to work. think that we all need to do better. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's just like, you know, when we were growing up and if you put fertilizer on your grass, you know, you didn't hear about, well, it washes down into the, you know, it goes to the water. Right? And then it kills the fish. And, I mean, in, the, in California, it talks about how everything goes to the ocean. Um, but I didn't hear that when I was growing up. Did you? I had a uh, science project. I didn't know how to fertilize a lot. I didn't use fertilizer, but true, I, true. In my science project, we showed how you use 
uh, how you can purify dirty water through the process yeah. of, through different elements, sand and rocks and stuff like that. And how the, the story was how important it was in our environment to not put other things into the grass and to the ground because that would then filter into the water. To your point, Brenda, I think that that's absolutely correct. I think to take it one step further, it has to make, it has to be a sustainable process. Mm -hmm. yes. It has to be easy and easy enough that it's economical enough to do it. If you make it, if you make it um, too costly or too hard, it's not going to get done and people are going to go around it and it defeat the whole purpose. So it's got to be the right way. Although when we went to Germany, you know, and Germany recycles and has been since the 80s. Mm -hmm. I mean, and before that, you know, that was the first time I was introduced to it. Yeah, me too. You know, and I thought you and, went there. And the they had a good system. What? Well, the problem with the, the, you can have a good system, you can have a system. Um, I, I don't know about Germany, but here if you start looking at it, you know, any anybody that uh, um, any deviation from what they need is an impurification and causes a problem. Yeah. And so to that's why I, you know, hearing that, that more people are um, incinerating for energy uh, it appeals to me. Um, because, you know, gosh, you, you look at this stuff. How do you how do you, how do you recycle some of it? You know, right. yeah. You know, the charger that sits on your tape, you know, that sits on your desk for three years. When you finally get rid of it, you know. Remember the movie Slumdog? Um, oh right. yeah. Where they had people, the Indian people, sitting there smashing computers, and <laughs> you know, and that's where all our our PC waste went to. To India? <laughs> well, it, yeah, it was in the wherever the guy, the little kid in Slumdog, millionaire. But was, you know, uh, you know, and what I took away from that movie is how dirty and how unsanitary things are. Well, and they, yeah, they can be. They yeah. can. Be. But we still have that around the world because there's. Oh, pockets, I know. Yeah, there's pockets of people who just don't have the ability to have running water, so they can't keep things clean. They have to. Right. I don't know how they do it. You know, that's, that brings up an interesting point. You know, the, the uh, I learned a year or two ago that um, the uh, with the with better sewers, there's been less there's less cases of ringworm in in civilized societies, right? Mm -hmm. the, the more where you have the trash and so open sewers and stuff, the higher the cases of ringworm. The higher the cases of ringworm, the lower the cases of allergies and other afflictions. Really? So you, you, you you're, there's always a, you know, there's always a give and take. And uh, there are people that actually sell uh, ringworm uh, for the states for people. And you know, people believe that they need to have a little bit of it in their system. I guess it's strange. It's oh, wow. strange. That's well. Okay, I mean, we do put pro, what is it pro, probiotics in our bodies to keep good gut cleaning. Well, maybe that's associated. I don't know, but I, yeah, yeah, there's certainly, certainly known lots of people with allergy, asthma, and allergies. Hmm. And that's what this is getting. Wow. Hmm. Well, I love your, your dining your living room looks much nicer than when I was there. Oh, can you see it? Yes, I guess you can. Yes, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it looks it looks very uh, different. Kind very, of uh, what's the uh, it looks like something out of uh, one of the magazines. <laughs> nice. I'm guard or whatever. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the, the yeah, we piecemeal piece all that together. It looks pretty good. We like it. So did you get your light bulb that you can talk to for the, for the living room? Which, Weren't you having a problem turning one on or something? I was, and I haven't reconciled that yet. Yeah, I haven't reconciled that yet. I probably, after doing her house, I should probably get one of those bulbs when I come back. But we've been too much, too busy for me to think about that this trip. Well, you know, if you if you call Amazon now, it'll be there. 
Tuesday. <laughs> I know, right? Tuesday. Maybe tomorrow. It'll be there tomorrow. It'll be there Monday. It'll be there Monday. Maybe yeah. even tomorrow. Right, right. Yeah. Um, I'm not that anxious. <laughs> I saw, uh, when, when COVID first came out, I saw that uh, it said the first case of uh, of COVID was reported at Amazon. Now everybody can have it by tomorrow. Oh, right. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Because the, the whole premise of Amazon is zero to two days, they can have your product at your door. But he's saying that somebody got COVID. Oh, everybody will have it by tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> That's cute. In fact, the class I'm teaching on Tuesday is saying That's that if you get from Amazon, you know, that's that we're talking about Nordstrom's and um, the, higher, the Hyatt and uh, Southwest Airlines. You know, what is their product brand and what do they espouse and what do they what are they are known for? And it's the service, you know, their customer service is really what they're all known for. But I'm going to have to throw that in. <laughs> well, you know, if you, Amazon's an amazing company. You know, it's not just it's not just the shipping. It's also they do, you know, a huge part of whatever your cloud services are. They do a huge part of it. And of course, they're trying to do like Tesla, trying to get into the space game. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, I, I've been like, trying to look at what's the downside to, to Amazon. You know, it's going to be many years before somebody comes along and knocks them off. Uh, have you seen all their warehouses? Oh yeah, I mean we have like five or six within you know just ten minutes over, of my house. Just well, around the Dallas Fort Worth Airport, there's like five or six of them, and that's just in that part of the city. And I'm like, oh my god, that's how much stuff we order. Yeah. And I told um, on the way to take Justin yesterday, um, there's this huge Amazon warehouse. And I said, Justin, you know, what I could do is, you know, start working for Amazon. <laughs> okay. And he said, yeah, we'll get the discount, right? <laughs> get the discount? <laughs> oh, so speaking of that, would uh, Amy commute back to her job since she, she loves her job? Oh, well, she's, it's a permanent working from home job. Oh, excellent. I mean, other than when she volunteers, when the company has everyone do their volunteer time or uh -huh. um, you know, if there's a major meeting, but I don't know that she's really gone in that many times since the pandemic started. So oh, no sliding board time. Yeah. Hey, Betsy, there's a challenge for you. Uh, all these people that are working at home, it's creating all this empty office space. Mm -hmm. Right. That's what we're going to do with it. Right. Well, we know what the Pentagon's doing with theirs. What? What are they doing? Well, they're going to uh, kick out everybody that doesn't need to be there and only those that are critical because they're not going to have critical conversations about, you know, defending our country and intelligence. Um, but while sitting in their houses, but all those who can right. sit in the house like me, I do non-essential work. It is essential, but non-essential, you know, in the ca case of a t intelligence or defense. Uh, yeah, we can. And I'm, that's one of the things I've been doing the last couple of weeks is cleaning out the office. I've burn bagged. I've got 18 burn bags sit around, sitting around waiting to be taken down. I uh, cleaned out all the um, files, uh, you know, the big drawer, file drawers, Okay, yeah. so but the point is that creates a lot of empty space. Right. But the space is going to go to people who need to be there only. So military. Where were they before? Well, we've paid for a lot of lease space. Your tax dollars. Right. Okay, paid now lease. let's go to the so, next step. All that lease space. So we're releasing the release, but we're releasing the lease space. So that means that they're going to have to go out and find whoever else. So it could be that Amazon wants their building, or like the building across the street here. They've turned that office building into apartments. Okay. Well, well, like and it's becoming more residential, and that's likely what will happen with Crystal City. Well, like in El Paso County, where I just moved from, um, the county, all the, you know, they have, they moved as many people to uh, work remotely as possible. All that empty space, they have converted to uh, little tele- uh, cubicles. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's a big popular when, thing. When too. you need to come in and see a customer or when you need to come in and do something, you have to, you know, uh, reserve a space. 
but mm-hmm. you're talking, I mean, like yesterday when I, I parked in the riding chair in um, Greeley and just off, I mean, cause there were lots of um, shops there. Every one of them's closed. And it's sad to see all these buildings are now empty. You know, what are we going to do with all that? And it's just, I used, I remember when I went back to Roanoke one time, there were so many, you know, empty business buildings. Um, but what are we going to do with that? I mean, I people are oh. going to get creative and repurpose uh, the way we use our buildings. And I think they're probably going to stop building for commercial use until we know exactly how people want to use that space. But like Germany, as you know, from living there, and in, I don't know how it was in Japan, but in Germany, you know, people had their businesses and they lived over top of the businesses. Yeah. So we, I just think we're going to have to repurpose and rethink how we're living and how we're operating. There are some people who cannot work at home because it's too, dis, you know, too disruptive. So there's probably going to be people who want to go somewhere to work yeah. And it could be like what you're talking about, what they call it's there's a place here called spaces and they they provide a um, you know conference space. They provide single office space. They have places for you to park your bicycles and they have a little coffee bar and it's all contained in one office building. Big what used to be one big office building, which is now something available available to people who uh, and especially like contractors or single people that have um, ongoing work that just can't work in the, the home space. But, but, you know, but you had office here. Mm-hmm. Majority of people went into an office. Right. Okay. Then you have residents here. Everybody had a residence. Right. Okay. So this part right here is going to have significant uh, vacancy problem. Mm-hmm. This was already, this may have had some, uh, a little bit less capacity, I mean, a little bit less capacity than it needed, but you can't just repurpose all this that's disappearing into, okay. you, you can certainly move it to residences, but to, to, to your point about the uh, workspaces or, or WeWorks or whatever that is, um, the, if, if a large part of it, people are working at home, it's not going to create that much of a, um, a demand. Right. It depends. You know, the new workers, I, what I've found is the people my age don't like to work at home. Uh, you know, you and, he, you and me don't mind working from home because we've been doing that forever and we know how to do that. I know how to put up a laptop anywhere, point taken right here on the coffee table, I mean, on the dinner table. But um, there are people who don't like to work in the house because, one, they have a bunch I mean, of kids. I, I got that, they, but what I'm saying is look at the volume of what's going to disappear. Yeah. Sure, sure. And people are going to either tear them down and repurpose the land or they're going to do something with it. Yeah, and I, I certainly hope that, 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 that there's a lot of innovation into, into residences and maybe that'll ease some of the pressure and pricing for home. Yeah. That would be a great thing to happen. Well, well, mom and I looked out, we're looking out the balcony last night and we've been watching this glass building that sits out there, you know, and we've seen it at all times of the day. And last night we looked over there and mom says, well, why is half the building dark and half the, if it's residences, why, why are not lights on in all of them? And I said, well, I don't know, but um, a lot of people would come to D.C. and rent an apartment to work here, like I have a place to work, and then they would go home on the weekend. And I said, now they don't have to come in, so it could be that they vacated their apartments and all those blank spots or dark spots are apartments. And so now, and I noticed as I was walking back from the 7-Eleven, there's a big sign hanging on the side of the building, live, work, loss. You know, it's like they have vacancies, so they want people to to lease. So the pricing's going to ease up. Yeah. Yeah. That'd we went to the mall and there was so four floors of mall. Pe- Pentagon oh, Mall. Yeah, I took yeah. it to Pentagon City Mall yesterday. And there was so many that closed up. Well, a lot of stores closed up there. A lot, there's a few stores in Sherlington that have closed up. But that's, you know, all that's, I think, will reemerge once we come out of the pandemic. But still, to your point, Tom, you're right. There's going to be uh, a rethinking. Yeah. Uh, what are we doing with all this office space if we're not needing it, if it's going to be more telework? Well, I think it'll be, you know, the, the property owners will go through that process. Mm-hmm. But 
there's certainly going to be some opportunities there somewhere. I hope. I certainly hope it eases the price of housing. That, that would be a nice thing. That would be nice. Yeah, that would be nice for well, all of us, I think. Well, I talked to a realtor here, and she really didn't want to talk to me until I was pre-qualified. But then she told me, well, and you have to have this much above asking for cash down because that's what's going to happen if you want a place. Um, so high. And it's for like it's between 4.2 and 4.6 percent above asking that you have to have in cash mm. to bid above. I mean, that's the Denver market. Oh wow! And that's huge. They're in a boom. And the, the, and the median price is seven hundred thousand. Mm. But they're in a boom, so, right? Uh, I wonder if the some of the office buildings in downtown uh, Denver are. Are, are look, looking at repurposing for residents. Well, there are so many buildings going up in Denver. It's just shocking. Too many oh. people are still moving there. Something. Yeah. I was going to say there's businesses moving there, and I'm not quite sure why. Right. Why it was in Denver, but uh, yeah, I remember there was a boom. Huh. But I think I think well, first off, Denver or Colorado stays on the top ten, within the top ten. Uh -huh. Hmm. Well, guys, I this, I go. okay. he's got to go wake up Thea, yeah, <laughs> fix your breakfast. I'm sure she's up by now. I have to go mow the yard and a number of other things. So. All right. Well, it's good okay. to talk to you guys. Yeah, good have fun to talk with to the kids. I will. Love, Love you guys. Good day, guys. You too. Yeah, you. I'm going to Victoria Bryant Park. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll get there. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Bye. Bye. Love you.